On the 29th of May 1942, five large Japanese I-class submarines rendezvoused some 35 nautical miles northeast of the entrance to Sydney Harbour for an impeding surprise attack on the numerous Allied warships anchored peacefully in the harbour. Prime targets included the cruisers HMAS Canberra and the USS Chicago. The Japanese plan was to launch three midget submarines off Sydney Heads and, after penetrating the anti-submarine booms laid across the harbour mouth, to sink as many ships as possible. Although it housed a major Allied naval base with 20 warships at anchor within a capital city, Sydney was poorly defended. Its harbour patrol force was small and inadequately armed, and its communications on a dark winter night were unreliable. The next night, on 31st of May, the Japanese motherships I-22, I-24 and I-27 dispersed in an arc formation outside the harbour entrance before each of them released a midget submarine. The Taipei Kohayatiki class midget submarines were transported to near their targets by the large submarines as deck cargo. Despite their popular name, they were hardly midgets at all. They were 24 metres long. Each was armed with two torpedoes. Their two-man crews, like all Japanese fighting men, were prepared to die in striking the Emperor's enemies. The first midget submarine to enter Sydney Harbour, M27, did so at approximately 8pm. It had not gone far when the vessel's propellers became entangled in an anti-submarine net close to the western boom gate at around 8.15. The disturbance in the water caused by the snared submarine was soon observed and subsequently reported, at which time patrol boats HMAS Euroma and HMAS Lolita were ordered to investigate. It took the Navy nearly an hour and a half to confirm the presence of the Japanese sub. Just moments before Euroma and Lolita were to attack, the submarine's crew, realizing they could not free the midget's propellers, chose a warrior's death. They fired demolition charges that destroyed their sub at 10.37pm. This explosion raised a general alarm in Sydney. The second midget submarine, M24, had successfully entered the harbour at 9.48pm. Sometime later, Chicago, lying at a man-of-war anchorage, sighted the midget's periscope at about 500 yards distance. Searchlights quickly illuminated the submarine and shots were fired in its general direction. However, Chicago's guns could not be depressed sufficiently and it was thought her gunfire had no discernible effect. Half an hour later, the sub fired two torpedoes at Chicago, both of which missed the intended target. One ran ashore at Garden Island, failing to explode, while the second passed under the Dutch submarine K-9, striking the seawall of Garden Island. It exploded on impact beneath the requisitioned Sydney Harbour Ferry Cuttable, which at the time was being used as a Royal Australian Navy depot ship. Cuttable sank immediately and 21 Allied naval ratings, 19 Australian and 2 British, were killed. Others were badly injured or trapped. The sub M24 evaded further detection and their vessel disappeared without a trace, not to be seen again until 2006 when recreational divers discovered its wreck off the Sydney northern beaches. The wreck was found to have numerous bullet holes, meaning the Chicago's guns had hit their mark. Later, in the early hours of 1st of June, a third enemy midget submarine, M22, entered the harbour. It was later detected in Taylor's Bay, where it was depth-charged repeatedly by patrol boats Sea Mist, Steady Hour and Euroma. It was subsequently raised and its two-man crew were found dead inside from self-inflicted gunshot wounds. Following their discovery in the harbour, midgets M27 and M22 were thoroughly examined. M27 was later mounted on a trailer and towed around Australia to raise war funds. It took days to recover and account for the 21 ratings that were killed in the Cuttable. On the 3rd of June 1942, 200 Navy personnel attended a burial service conducted with naval honours for those killed in Cuttable. The Royal Australian Navy also recognised the bravery of the four Japanese submariners recovered from the two submarines destroyed in the harbour. They too were accorded a funeral with Navy honours at Rookwood Cemetery, a gesture much appreciated in later years by the Japanese. The cremated remains of the submariners were returned to Japan two months later. At the time, the Australian government censor 
ordered a total censorship of the events, issuing an official statement on the afternoon of the 1st of June that reported that Allies had destroyed three submarines in Sydney Harbour. Smith's Weekly finally released the real story on the 6th of June, and follow-up material in the 13th of June issue caused more political damage, prompting the Royal Australian Navy to attempt to charge the newspaper with releasing defence information. Around midnight on the 8th of June, I-24 fired 10 shells into Sydney's eastern suburbs, mostly ineffectually. At 2.15, I-21 surfaced at Stockton Bight and fired on the city of Newcastle. The onshore response came from Newcastle's Fort Scratchley, which would end the war as the only Australian shore establishment to have fired on enemy warships off the Australian coast. Large parts of the two midget submarines recovered from the seabed of the Sydney Harbour were used to construct one composite vessel, which currently forms a major exhibit along with the wheelhouse from Cutterball in the Australian War Memorial, Canberra. The conning tower of M22 is on display in the Naval Heritage Centre at Garden Island in Sydney. Thanks for tuning in to Oz History, where we bring small snippets of Australian history to life. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe. And if you're listening to one of our podcasts, please like that as well. Have a great day.